Hey guys, welcome back. Um, today is a really quick and easy tutorial. This is not my technique, unfortunately. I saw it like three, three or four years ago. So I don't remember who actually made the tutorial. So if you guys know as I'm doing this, um, put a shout out in the comments and that way I can give credit to the original artist. And basically, it's just your typical um, alcohol ink on translucent trick. So I'm going to take three colors. I have pool, which to me does not look like a pool. And I have sailboat blue, just a really nice cobalt blue. And Laguna. These are the three colors that I probably use the most when I do my blues. So one's more of a green, one's more of a turquoise green. And then you've got that stark cobalt blue. Okay, so I'm using Cernit. I had all that Cernit, so I figured I would just use it up. So I still had a whole bunch on my table. And basically, I'm just going to take a paintbrush... And I'm just going to cover all of this. And the reason I do this is it just makes it dry a little bit faster. If it's pulled up in areas, it takes forever to dry. Okay, so this way, if it's all smeared up and spread out really well, it just makes it a little faster drying. Okay, and then I will pause the video. And then what I'll do is run it through the pasta machine. Um, I'm going to go thin. I don't go really, really thin on these. But a little thinner than, you know, like a 3. So I'm going to do this with probably a 6 or a 7. But not enough to where it's going to crumble on me. And then when that's laid out, I will come back and we'll finish the video at that point. So, just wanted to store, show you the start of what I'm starting here. So, again, we have, I think this was Laguna. This is Sailboat Blue. And Pool. Which is more like a turquoise green. You could probably use turquoise and wouldn't matter. You can use any colors you want. Any blue that you have, just use it. Um, I'm just using this because this is what I've got. And so we're going to let these dry. Oop. And then once they dry, I'll run it through the pasta machine. Again, at a number... I'll probably run it at a 7. 6 or a 7. And then we'll go from there. So we'll see you in a little bit. Talk to you soon. Okay, so we are back. So now that all the colors are blended in there, I ran it through the machine on a thin setting. You don't want to go all the way to 9. A 6 or 7 on your machine would be fine. And then the fun part is just adding silver leaf to it. And that's basically all this cane, or not cane, this stack is going to be. So I'm grabbing silver because it's supposed to be summery. Uh, looks like I might need to buy more silver leaf. Both of these are just so thin. So we're just going to put some spots that get stuck on my finger here on the edges. But we want to cover all of this. So again, if this technique is familiar to me or to you and you know who made it, please let me know so I can give them credit. Um, it has to be over three years old, I would assume, because it, like I said, it was a while before I even got into polymer clay that I saw it. And that was the only time I saw it, and I can't believe I'm actually remembering it. 
but again if you know who it is let me know and then we'll put the credit in I'm hoping I have enough silver to finish this because that would be horrible if I don't right now all I've got are just little little pieces left so I'm going through the sheet one by one and I know I just ordered a bunch of leaf but I think I may have ordered just gold and copper one day we're going to have to do a, a technique using copper, because I don't use that. I don't know why I bought the copper, but I've got it. Okay, so we're going to just cut that up over here. <coughs> Try not to sneeze or anything like that on this, because it will come off. Yeah, I'll worry about filling in all those sections when I'm done. Oh, look at that. I've got one full sheet right here. It's the only one I think I have left. I crinkled it on there. The great thing with leaf is it will not stick to itself. So you can just pull it right off and put it where you need it. Alright, let's see what else I have. I think I may have just used all of it up. If I'm lucky, there'll be one more. Ah. Oh, look at that. That might be enough to do the rest. Look at how lucky that was. Okay, so now, do I have any more little pieces? Nope. Okay, so that goes in the trash. And now we're just going to grab off the ends here. And cover. I mean, if you don't cover it all, it's not a big deal. You'll just get a couple a couple open spaces here. There's some extra right there. We're going to just push that around. There we go. So here's some extra. This whole strip is extra. This made a lot more than I thought it was. I just used a couple little sheets, as you saw. But I didn't factor in the fact that it was going in the pasta machine really thin, which lengthened it all. Alright, so now I've got to figure out how to cover all of this. So we're just going to kind of move this stuff around, try and get all your air bubbles out now. Okay, I got to have more silver. For me, to not have enough um, is kind of strange. So I'm going to look really quick. I got a little bit of colors right there. But I honestly should have one more container of silver. Oh, this stuff just gets everywhere, doesn't it?
Okay, I'm going to look in one more spot and I'll be right back. Alrighty, we're back. And I did the best I could. So, I found little odds and ends here and there. So I was able to cover everything. There's just a little bit that I didn't cover. And honestly, I'm not going to worry about it. So, again, I didn't know <laughs> that this was going to be so big. And they're not going to be even. So hopefully that doesn't matter. I'm going to do that. I'm going to cut those in three. Maybe we'll add those. So basically, ah. You're going to take one and put it on top of the other. Like that. And then we'll take this one, put it on top of that one. So what I could do is just add this little piece right here. Add that one to there. Add that one there. So maybe I could use all these. And we're going to add that one there. This one just wanted to stick. Take both of these, put that right there on top. And again, we're going to take that one and put it right on top. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So now we're just going to squish this all down. We do have a little bit of silver here, so maybe we can pick it up. Maybe not. <laughs> okay, but we're going to just squish it like this. And this is Cernit, which is why you see me kind of struggling with it a little bit. Cut this about in half. Again, I'm going to squish it down one more time and then, gosh darn it, I'll probably do one more time after that. Like putting a puzzle piece back together. Okay, so we're going to do one more. These are our lines so far. So I'm trying to make it really thin. Okay. So now we're going to square it up. doesn't matter if you distort it. The lines distorted is a good thing. Part of me wants to stick a little design in there. And 
and I do have something that I could use here, but again, maybe I will just leave it alone. Let's see what it looks like first. So now's the fun part, basically. You're just going to cut into it. Okay. So it doesn't matter how thick you make it. Thick. Just take little pieces out anywhere you want. And you'll see the design that you get out of there. So it's all going to be different. Now, what are you to make with these? I mean... I don't really know. You know, I sure don't want an earring with a hole in it because you definitely won't see this design. Ah, okay, we're just going to keep doing it that way. Now, a two-tone would be nice. But, okay, now i got to order more silver leaf. Because I really like how this turned out. So I'm just going to use half for now. Instead of cutting all of that up. to remember that I'm using Cernet. So let me get a piece of paper and we're just going to put that over it as I do this because Cernet definitely likes to stick to everything. It doesn't help that it's sticking to my roller here. Maybe I just need to use the whole thing, huh? Oh, this is so pretty. You guys are going to have fun with this one. And yes, this is my first time. Oh, and putting resin on this is going to look so awesome. And I'm really, I'm sad. Um, from the Heart Supplies has stopped selling for now due to medical reasons. And she literally has the best resin out there. And now I can't get any more. So if you guys know a good resin, I know one of you told me about a resin and I did buy some, but it's still pulling away from the edges for me. So, <clears throat> I haven't really used it because of that fact. I hate resin that moves away from the edges. And the From the Heart Supplies was perfect. It just never moved. Um, minimal air bubbles. Um, I do have Ultra Dome. That always ends up tacky for me no matter how long it's in the UV lamp. Okay, we're almost hitting the bottom of this. Oh, that kind of looks like a geode right there. So we're going to leave that and we're just going to cut around it here. I'm going to put that right there. 
I'm going to put that right there. Ah, so now we got a huge veneer. <clears throat> part of me saying these would look great as donuts, but I don't want to lose the middle part of that. I just think it's really pretty. So, I'm going to grab, I don't know, an oval shape or something. And maybe take some pearl. Ooh, I wonder how pearl would look on the side of this. me of honestly thinking of making a different cutter right now that I think I'll like for this so I may come back in a bit I think I'm gonna design a really quick cutter and what I'm thinking of doing is making an oval shape but half of it being this but when you lay them half down it just looks weird but if I make like a little, I don't know, like a little design in it, I think that would really look good. So, since I have that in my head and this is how ideas come to me, um, I'm going to go design a cutter real quick. And this is really thin right here. You can see the areas that are thin. So I'm going to take these little pieces right here and just put them up here. So, I'm going to show you what this looks like, and then we're going to get off, and I don't know, we're going to go take what's in my head right now, and get it into cutter form. So, this isn't perfectly smooth, and I know that. But if I put it under another piece, it might be okay because this is really thin. So I'm just kind of slicing it like that. Alright, so this is what we have. I just love the little designs in it. And it might be hard to see it through the camera. So I am going to take a break. I'm going to go make a cutter and I'll be right back. Alrighty guys, we are back. And the cutter we made at first was this kind of little thicker oval than what I've got up there with a sharp line. The only problem is, is I'm not liking the outside because my cutters, they have to be sharp. And this wasn't sharp and so I scrapped that idea. Excuse me. And instead... I made something like this. I made this two inches long, um, or three inches long actually, and I think it would be great to use for my kumigani. I know it's got to be a lot higher. I don't know if I really want to go too much higher because of the fact that these are really thin, so they're going to break off. But anyway, so we have our veneer that we made yesterday, and here I've got um, just a square of Sculpey Primo Black. And something that I don't use very often, and I just pulled this out and went, oh, this is kind of cool. And I know the color, but I don't. Um, I have the package for it, but I think it's white glitter gold. I've got a package right here. I'm trying to see if this came from there or what. Unfortunately, this is so old that... No, this is white. It's just so old that all the, the name came off, so I don't even know what this is. But I'm pretty sure it's a white glitter gold. It looks really silvery, and I thought it would go so good with this silver. So, what I'm going to do here 
is. I am going to take this. I'm trying to think. I want a backing of black and I want a blacking, backing of the silver. So this is a number zero. So I'm going to do this. Okay, I may not know what I'm doing here, but just follow with me and I'll figure it out. So I've got one of the black, one of the silver. So right here, I'm just going to take a little strip. Like that. And I'm going to cut it right here. It doesn't have to be perfect or anything. Okay, and I'm going to put this on top. So now it's got to be even. And now I just added probably another milligram or two to that. So we're going to have to take some of that off, obviously. So actually, if it didn't stick, I can run this in a number one. Because you want it to be the same thickness as the other side. So let's bring this down. Actually, we're going to bring it down to another two. All right, so we have this at a two. Yeah, sometimes you got to think about it before you, you start it. Okay, so I'm going to put this on like that. And the other part that's going to be a little difficult is the fact that we have to make sure that it's going to be even where we do the cut so that way both sides will match. Okay, so that's a number two. It does not, not seem very... It just doesn't seem like it's any thinner than a zero. I'm not sure why. But... We're going to leave it alone. See, and I just need a little strip. I'm going to put that right on top. I'm going to cut just right here. And this should make us two pairs of earrings. You don't have to be precise like this. I don't know why I'm worried about it as much as I am, but... Okay, so now... We're going to cut two more. So we're just going to blend this in a little bit so that it sticks to it. Okay, and again, I've got one, and you've got two. Okay, so this is the fun part. So I'm going to line these up. So as you can see, I've got one of these with a backing of silver. And then I have the silver backing. And you can see how I'm lining them up on my grids right here. This is the black. And this is the other black. Okay, and then this is my little cutter that I made. And I don't know how I want to use this. Um, I think I'm just going to put it in the center. So which one do I like better? I do like this. So I'm basically just taking it and making sure that it matches up with the very top. And I'm going to make sure it's even like that. Okay. So there's one. Do the same on this one. I don't really like the way that cut through the bottom like that, but it's too late now. Okay, I'm going to do that again. Up and down. And then come back and do one more. Same as the other ones. And go straight down. Okay, so we know that this is the black. 
Okay, so this is the black part, and we're just going to stick it in right there. Could be a little tricky. You're just going to have to maneuver it a little bit. I don't know if I like the design or not. Um, I just kind of played around. Made some squiggles and... The only way you can find out if you like it to make it again is to play with them. Okay. So we have that. And the same with this. We're going to pull that one out. See how this one kind of this one kind of fell apart here. But this one is fine. And then we're going to take that. Now, the only thing, I don't know what happened to the other half of it. The only thing about doing it this way is because I cut it in half, I'm probably still going to have to back the backing. So I may not do a backing next time until the very end. All right, so once you've got this placed inside, don't worry if you mess up your shape because you're going to do a final cut. I just want to make sure that it's all in the holes like that. And then you're just going to flatten them. So you're going to misshape it a little bit. Okay, I'm just going to push it all together so there's no seams. Okay, like that. I'm not sure I like the black, but I, I kind of like the silver. And I think if it goes in the oven, it's going to look really cool. But my squiggles aren't as squiggly as I want. Okay, so we have all four. Let me just show you. See, you're going to see a little bit of mess on the back. So you might still have to, to back it which I could probably do now. So we're going to grab some black and we're going to back at least those. And you don't need a whole lot. You know, I'm probably going to do a number five. I'm not sure if I really like the black. You know, I'm going to texture it. Okay, and I'll turn it around. And I'm going to lay them right on top. Okay. So to make sure those are both even, I'm just going to take an acrylic block. Which, yes, I have a million different little blocks, and I never can find them when I need them. Okay, and I'm just going to put this on top. And that helps me get them to the same size. So, I'm going to have to play with the squiggles a little more. I'm not real happy with the squiggles that I've got. Or the way I cut them, I think I'm going to have to go sideways on them. I mean, they're still going to look kind of cool. But I don't like the way the squiggles came out. I'm playing with all different kinds of shapes, so... It's getting that one that's good enough to sell, then that's what I'll do. I'll probably still have these, because I still like them. And I'm sure you guys can figure out something to do with them. Ah, that was a mistake. Okay, that should be okay. 
And again, this is just a test, right? So again, I can feel that this one's a little higher than that one. And I did not texture the back. So I'm going to come back in here really quick and texture before I cut. If you texture after your cut, then your shape's going to get all wonky on you. Okay. Let's get a little bit in here. The silver looked cool. I don't know, but now that I do it, I'm not sure if I'm really happy with it. And that one might be just a little too big for this cutter. So I want to get all of it. So we're going to do that. Alrighty, now all we can do is put it in the oven. And once we resin it, it'll probably look a lot better. But I'm not real happy with the squiggles. I think they need to be a little smaller. So again, this was a test piece. But you can see that I used these. And that goes back really far. So I'm going to bring this in a little bit. Bring them in a little bit more, a little tighter. Okay, but your ends are now cleaned up. Your backs are cleaned up. So we're going to cut the strip of this. And I'm going to show you the, the little tiny cutters that I made yesterday. Okay, and I'm going to see if those will work better. So, how thin is this? I'm going to do it on the silver. The black is okay. Ah, I like the black too. So hold on a minute. What we'll do is let's see how thick this is compared to this. It's a little wider. So we're going to cut this at a three. And I'm not going to put a backing on it right away. Well, let's see if that helps a little bit. So we're going to take that other little cutter that I made. And actually, these were, these I make mirrored. I don't know why I made them mirrored, but. Okay, so we're going to cut two of these. And again, these are really thin. Nope, actually, I only need one of those. All right. And then one of these. This has got some blue on it, so. I'm going to mix this up really well. Okay, so we're going to make this at a number three. Okay, now it's got some sparklies in it, so we're going to get rid of that one. Okay. So there's two of them right there, and we're going to do this one. These are a little tighter, so I don't know if I want it up and down. Yeah, we'll just do up and down. Okay, so we're going to do that. And you just got to figure out where you're putting it, because obviously when you get to the other piece, you're going to have to match it up. Okay, so we're going to do that. And that. Okay. And then we're going to take um, two of these. So let's grab the football again. That's what it looks like is a big football. Okay. Okay. 
And again, we're going to do the exact same. Make sure you're cutting with the, the right side here. So, thinking that's what it was. And again, you're going to go right in the center. And you're going to do the same with this one. Okay, so now we're going to take, see that one's really thin, and that one isn't, so we're going to take the thin one, and I turned that one upside down, so hopefully I got this one right. Oi. Shouldn't have turned it upside down. Thinking that's right. Okay, wrong there. Now, don't be like me <laughs> and remember exactly where you put it together, or you will never know how it goes back together. See, but that's, I like that because it's it's got two even pieces. This one does not. These are too small. Because this one, see, this one's the black. Yeah, I know. I really hate when I do stuff like this sometimes. So this is supposed to fit in with this. This is going to fit in with this. Okay. So this is the small one that is going to fit in with this one. And then this big one, it's like a puzzle. I'm normally really good with puzzles, but see that can't be right because if you can see this is so much bigger than this one. Because it is. Because this should be with this. So I don't really know how I messed that up. But I literally did. And I've made one of these yesterday and they were perfect. So I don't really know what I did wrong here. This one's a little thinner. So I'm just going to leave that alone. See, this should go here. Or should it? It doesn't make sense. It does not make sense. This should fit exactly how I took it out. And I know somebody out there is looking at what I'm doing and go, I know what you did wrong. Because this does not make sense at all. And this fits perfectly into this one. So obviously, that is what I need to go in there. But it has to be the thinner one. So we're going to look at this one. And it's straight down. And then a little curve. See, these two are identical. Oh, I'm so sorry, you guys. This should not be this hard. I mean, literally, it should not be this hard. So, we may have to cut this again. Okay, so there's a big one. So maybe that's why I made the mirror. I don't think so. That, that should have nothing to do with it. There should be one side that goes with one and one side that goes with the other. This makes no sense.
All right, so you know what? I'm not even gonna bother doing it that way. I'm gonna figure out what I did wrong, so I will be right back. Okay, so scratch everything I've done so far, sorry. Um, we're gonna try something new. And I'll show you exactly what we're gonna do. So this is about one and a half, about one and a half square. Okay. So we're gonna make a one and a half square of this silver or this white gold, whatever you wanna call it. Okay. I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do the same on the blue. Minus the little edge here. I just wanna make sure that it's gonna come out perfectly. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. Okay, so we're gonna take our little cutter here it doesn't really matter what I'm going to use, right? I'm going to go top to bottom. And I want to make this even. I think this will give me a little more leeway. Doing it this way. So like this right here is a little wider. So I'm going to just take that off. And the same with this one. We're just going to take a little bit off of there. Okay, so now we're at least even. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top of this. And I'm just going to switch them. Yeah, because I have no idea what happened on the last one. But boy, was that a whole lot easier or what? So, see... And you kind of learn things on the fly. Sometimes you can figure it out quickly. Sometimes I'm scratching my head trying to figure out what I did wrong. These are going to be really cute, I think. Okay, so we're going to just push these in. Okay. Now we're looking a little better. So now I'm going to turn it around. Because I don't want that to be the back, obviously. So we're just going to take a little backing at a number five. Okay. And you can cut it right here if you want. You can cut it at the very end. Okay. And you can keep the shape square if you want to. Okay, I'm going to do that with the other one. I'm just excited about putting these in the oven and seeing what it turns out to look like. Okay, so now we're just going to cut that right there. Didn't leave me much room, did I? Alrighty, so now I'll take both of those and we're just going to make sure that they're both even and that the back is on there really nice. Now once we put our little texture on it, it'll really keep them together. And with the silver, you don't need a whole lot because you're not going to see it because of all that sparkle back there. All right, now we do the cut. Okay, make sure you're even and then it's all nice. See this, you can still see a little bit of it going into it. I don't want to see that. I just want it to really blend in there. Okay. 
put all that work into fixing these. I don't want them to go bad now. Okay, let me find my acrylic block. See how fast I lose things? I mean, this is my life. Okay, now let's take our a wide oval. So I have pointed ovals. They're number 34, I believe. These are a little wider because I wanted to um I wanted to get a lot of this on here. So I don't know if I want as much silver as I do the blue. But I'm gonna try right there. And I'm gonna put this right here. And then this way, really, you can kind of measure how much blue to silver you want. So I kind of like doing it this way. I'm gonna go a little more. I think about right there. You know, you can change your directions on them as well. Okay, so I know these don't look like anything at the moment. But hopefully, so you got a nice little textured in. Hopefully, when we get these out of the oven and resin, these are going to look awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Actually, I was thinking of making one more. And I want to try pearl. So let's do one more. We have black. We have silver. We're going to do pearl here. And again, I'm just cutting this at a number three. And I'm using this little cutter right here. And I'm just going to grab right next to it. And then the one thing about veneers like this is you can put them back together. Um use your brayer on it and then you'll be able to make a whole new strip of them okay so now we got another one and yeah this one I didn't like because these are just a little too wide so I'm gonna go back and I'll redo those okay so there's one and doing it this way, doesn't matter where you go. Oh, so much easier. I wish I would have thought of this when I first started. I don't know why I had to be so technical and everything just had to be so difficult. When this was just the absolutely easiest way to do them. Okay, and so obviously I don't want to waste all of this because I can cut it up and make some more. So I'm just cutting a little bit off of each side and I know that I don't want as much of the pearl. So we're going to cut the pearl down really small. And we'll just cut a little bit off of here. Alright, and that we can use again. Okay, so again you're just going to push these as close as you can together that all right and we'll finish these up Okay, so let's grab some more pearl, and now we're going to make a really nice backing there. And you don't need a whole lot, and this is going to be at a number five. And this has got a little blue on it, oh well. It'll have a really nice little blue tint to it, All right? And you won't see it anyways because it's going to be on this side. So we're going to move that over. Okay. 
Okay. So again, I'm just going to make sure that they stay put. A little texture here. Thank you, Jan, for this texture piece. I use it in everything that I do. It really is pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to turn this around. Oops, I got a little sideways there, so I'll make sure that I... I do this right, but you can do sideways. I mean, you don't have to have it straight up. You can kind of move it like that, which would be interesting, or move it like this. Um, but for simplicity's sake, I am just going to leave this the way that it is. Okay, I don't like, oh, I don't know what happened to this clay, but it's got some weird, weird little shapes in there. So let me come in here and just clean this up a little better. I mean, you could even texture it if you wanted to. Oh, now that would be cool too. Too late to do it now, but you could take a texture roller and roll your clear and that way you'd get a really nice texture. I don't think I can do that now. I mean, you can do it with this. You know, and give it a little texture. But if you're going to resin it, then you're going to probably lose all that texture feel to it anyways. Okay, so we're going to put that right there. And I'm going to go a little more blue than I am of the white. Or the pearl in this case. Right there. And we're going to do the same here. And there you go. So there's four pairs of earrings real quick. I think this one's going to look the best. I don't know why, but I'm really liking the pearl. So let's go ahead and throw this in the oven, and then we can come back and show you what they look like with resin on them. Be right back. Hey, guys. We are back to show you what we got. I don't have them. In, oh, excuse me. I had a hiccup at the same time as I talked. Um, I don't have um, these in an earring yet, but I just wanted to show you how they looked after the resin was put on it so i don't know if you can see the sparkle it just brought out all the mica in the pearl and in the veneer we made so this was with the pearl Put that over here this was with the silver and unfortunately i used ultra dome and so i don't know the ultra dome is always tacky for me this is RJ Craft. I, I hope she opens up her store again because this is like the most awesome resin I've used. Um, the Ultra Dome. I'm not sure if I like it. I don't have any sunshine really out there today to put them out in the sun. But those were the two that we made. I don't know if I do the silver again. I think it clashes with it. So I do like the pearl. And then the black was Ultra Dome as well, and I'm not really happy with the finish on those. And you see how those lines were so big? So, I'm not really happy with those. I do like those, but it's still going to be a work in progress. Um, I did, before I um, resined everything, threw another cutter on the printer. So really quick, I'm going to take a look at this one. And I'm wondering if that would make a huge difference or not. So this one's a little longer and it's just wa little waves. Just like that. So I moved that veneer over to the side. I'm just going to grab this little piece right here just to see what happens. 
I know that it's not going to make anything, but and obviously that wasn't enough, but you get the you get the point. So that's something that you can do right there. Um, I'll have some sharp ones made, and I'll have some just kind of wavy. I'm going to do them both and throw them up there. Now, if you do Makumigani, that would be nice. Again, though, your your cane's not going to have to be very big. Because I don't think it'll work if it is. Because they're not really long. Because if this little thin strip is really long, it's going to break. I know some people make them, but um, I don't know how thick they go on that. The Makumi game, I probably could do more. Because you don't want it sharp. You want it kind of dull. So I could probably do a one millimeter on these. And they would work just fine. And that way I can go maybe a lot higher. But I'm going to have to play around and design. Right now I'm just trying to catch up on everything I've already got. So let's just. I don't know. Let's just cut this about right here. I like the blue. Which is why I'm using more of it. This I'm not going to make anything. I just want to see. If I like this design a little better, and I picked up the wrong blade. Okay, so you've got this, and then you've got that. So, wow, look at the difference between before baked and after baked. That's just amazing how much of a different color it is. So, don't go by your colors, whatever you do, especially if you're using Cernit, because you might get a whole lot of change there. Um, I kind of like that wave too. So we're going to play around a little bit. We're going to make a bunch of these. So now I've got these and then for the bigger ones we've got the the straight back and forth. Yeah, I can't find anything on my desk. It's really that bad. So we got both of these. So I don't know. I'll probably put these up there for a couple dollars. I'm not really quite sure yet. Usually my three inch cutters go for about four dollars or five. Um, but I don't think I'll go that high for these because there's not much to them. So maybe about four, three fifty or four. I don't know yet. But anyways, that's what we got. And um, hope you guys enjoyed that. And we we're gonna stay in here. We took the dogs for a walk. It's freezing outside. Had a beautiful rain yesterday. I mean, a lot of rain for the past two days. And so it was nice seeing all the snow on the mountains, on um, in the distance, and. Yeah, so now I'm going to get all nice, cozy, warm, and I'm going to play with some canes. So if I have a cane that I'm going to make, I will definitely record that, and we'll put that up on Sunday. So we'll talk to you later. You guys have a great week. Bye.